Hello and welcome to the Meet the Expert series of the Talking Logs with Lockseed podcast. I am your host, Adi Balogu, and this episode is produced by Savage Media. After a well-deserved break from season two of our podcast, in this first episode of season three, we would like you to meet Atilola Zeno, a trichologist and certified advanced cosmetic scientist, as she takes us on some education on the basics of trichology. Atilola gives a fine introduction of her expertise and craft, which speaks for itself. So without further ado, let's get the conversation going. Hi, Atilola, good afternoon, and welcome to the very first episode of the Meet the Experts series on the Talking Locks with Lockitude podcast. I'm really happy that you have joined us today, and um, thanks for kicking off this this series. So, can we get to meet you? Hi, Adilola, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be on your podcast. Um, it's a privilege and I do not take it lightly at all. Of course, my name is Atinola Zino. I'm a certified trichologist. I'm also an advanced cosmetic scientist. I own African naturalistas in Lagos, Nigeria and African naturalistas hair care services all over the world. So um, I'm very passionate about hair care, as you know, and I use my knowledge um, to roll out several products services and innovations to help women all over the world so i feel like if you can't reach them with your products um, you can reach them with your services and because of that um, i've gone ahead to create hair products over 50 hair products and several services including memberships um, special accountability programs uh, we have master classes we have conferences uh, we have a hair clinic of course and we for our hair clinic, we have both physical services such as, um, you know, the physical trichology consultation, the micro needling, the high frequency, and we also have the natural services, which some of which I've mentioned. So we have the online trichology consultations, we have our hair loss restoration programs. We have so many things that I would not be able to really take this time to talk about, but when it comes to helping ladies with their hair and with their scalp, I can do anything. I can create any program as long as I know that it will be beneficial to the people. So I just love seeing people with um, great hair, healthy hair, healthy scalp, and peace of mind. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, that's awesome. That's like an awesome introduction. And there's so much that you're up to. I have no news since we were back in university as a dancer and then seeing us morph into you know, what life has brought us to at this point, which kind of we meet again in the hair industry. Um, today, I would really like to talk to you um, about your experience and your work as a trichologist. And I think for most people, until you have a hair problem, you never even get to know that a specialist called uh, a trichologist exists. So what does it mean to be a trichologist? What is the practice of trichology? Okay, so basically what we do in trichology, what a trichologist does is that they solve basically hair and scalp disorders using topical treatments. Um, I think that's the summary of it all. Anything that has to do with hair loss issues or scalp disorders or hair care maintenance generally, um, that is what a trichologist does. We, we are not medical doctors, so we work in conjunction with other medical practitioners like doctors, nurses, dermatologist, just to make sure that somebody has um, good and healthy hair. So there are some things that doctors generally not touch, they will generally not do, because it doesn't come under the purview. I mean, a doctor really bothers themselves about some, some basic hair loss issues or some basic scalp disorders. Trichologists are the ones who do that. But when it comes to, you know, um, Having to do with things like we suspect hormonal imbalance, we suspect that this person needs surgery, we suspect that there's something deeper going on, like a thyroid function issue and all, then we send them to the doctor. So we work, we, all of us, we work in conjunction with uh, with one another. Okay, um, thanks a lot for that clarity. Um, so basically, um, you treat from a topical 
perspective and then you work in conjunction with other experts to treat internally if there's an hormonal or or some other type of type of um imbalance from the inside i suspected so i would like to speak specifically coincidentally you were one of the not we you were one you are actually the very first person i asked where i could lock my hair back in 2009 because at the time you already had locks and then you went and had locks that grew that were long and beautiful sorry i didn't get that can you come again I said that you said you were, I was one of the people. No, I said you were actually the very first person I asked where I could lock my hair back in 2009 because at that time you had locks. And then, you know, I know you cut your locks and then you have locks right now as we speak. Yes. Yeah. So um, I know that trichology covers all types of hair, but most times when people are deciding to lock their hair. There's a feeling that it has become something else. It's now different from your loose natural hair or even your relaxed hair. You hear questions like, should I wash it? How would I wash it? You know, what shampoo should I use? So it becomes something a little bit more special. There's that assumption that it is. So my question to you is that from a scientific point of view, when you choose to lock your hair, has anything changed or is it still just hair? Um, it's just hair. Very few things have changed. In the fact that, of course, you don't detangle your hair anymore. I think that's like the main, the main thing. You don't detangle your hair anymore. Then your styling practices have changed. But when it comes to the, what is growing out of your head, then a lot is still the same. Okay. Because okay, go on. Logis. And after I became a trichologist, and I do better, you get that there were some things that I allowed me, I mean, talking with personal perspective now, there were some things that I just took for granted after I became a trichologist, because yeah, I'm a trichologist and my hair is locked, so I shouldn't have taken for granted. So I know firsthand that a lot is still the same. Okay, great. Okay, so that's, that's, I just want to make sure that at least whatever conversation we have is specifically applicable to people that have locks. So, um, okay. As a loctician myself, and without having the background of the scientific study of hair, you know, I deal with hair on a daily basis, and you see people coming with problems of thinning hair, um, dandruff, extreme dandruff, scaly scalp, you know, and I personally know when to stop because usually um, the first thing you do is that you just try to recommend all sorts of products to try and help your customers. But I know that my experience is mostly limited to my own personal hair. And fortunately for me, I don't have that many issues. But I see people who come with extreme dry scalp, um, dandruff, and all these other things that I've mentioned. Um, I think one of the most common problems that I get to see in my practice is dandruff on the very basic part of it. And, um, and um, something that is now called psoriasis. I think I hope I'm pr- pronouncing that correctly, which I understand is different from yeah, yeah. from from dandruff. But at what point, as an individual, when you start to see problems in your hair, do you think you need to leave your regular stylist and look for a trichologist? Okay, first now let's like say that um, trichologists are no stylists, mm-hmm. um, so you can't leave your stylist. I'll see a trichologist. You have to work with both of them at the same time. And when you have a scalp disorder, like you have mentioned, you have to continue seeing your stylist and seeing your trichologist. And I hope that stylists are wise enough or knowledgeable enough to know when to refer their clients to a um, trichologist. So when you have when you have uh, um, seen something that is um, you have. For example, if your anti drop shampoo is not working for you, then see a trichologist. Okay. I mean, it's as basic as that. You don't need to see... If you, if you, if you think it's like big dandruff, then you don't need to see a trichologist because a trichologist will recommend an anti dandruff for you if you go to see him or her. But if you have used... At the point where you have used the, um, an anti dandruff shampoo, then and it's not working, or use an anti dandruff shampoo and so a day later or two days later, I mean, the snakes, the, sl- uh, the, uh, what, the flakes are falling off your scalp yes, like rain. 
then you know that this is more than dangerous. Because the truth is that what many people think is dangerous is, is not that. Dangerous is basically dry style that is agitated by uh, a particular fungus called pee over. You get so um, once it's getting too serious, you see a trichologist. Because if you do not see a trichologist, then it's going to get worse and worse, and then you start you know displacing yourself outside. Then, then if it's something noticeable enough for your stylist to to see, mm-hmm. then I think that you should also see a trichologist because many times a lot of people have issues that their stylists don't know because it's not that noticeable. But once people start saying it, once your stylists start complaining about it, then I think it's time for you to see a trichologist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and work with both of them, you get. I know very, very few trichologists that are stylists. Mm-hmm. I think I know just one. <laughs> I think I know just one. No, two, no, one actually. I just know one. But most times, one in Nigeria and one in the US, who is my my my, my trainer, my lecturer. But most times, trichologists are not usually oh, stylists. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay, oh, that's um awesome um information to know when to like at least see somebody when something else is happening. Now, from a point of view, I think you had mentioned that your personal experience you had abandoned some or you had taken some things for granted when you decided to lock your hair, even though you're a trichologist and then you started to see the effects. Can you tell us a little bit about that so that we can learn from that experience? Okay, so two things or three things. Um, I my hair is really interesting. The front of my hair is like baby hair. The middle of my hair is normal hair. The back of my hair is normal hair. So the front of my hair is very full. My hair is very full, very long. But the front is just different. It doesn't lock on time. Um, it's easily loses and it's very very frizzy. You get so first mistake I made was, um. When I started locking my hair, even though I knew about traction alopecia and all, at the point where I started locking my hair, I kept allowing my hair to be locked, my, the front of my hair, which is basically the, it's called the frontal region, you understand? Because we have the frontal region, the parietal region, the occipital region, and the temporal region. Most times, the blood vessels that supply these particular regions are different. So that's why one person can have four different hair textures. Because the blood vessel and everything happening in the parietal region is different from the frontal region. So, as not to get this to be very scientific, I, the frontal region of my hair, which is the front of my head, was being locked at with the same intensity as the parietal region you get, as the occipital region. And three months or four months, I complained, I'm like... This thing is cutting. But the issue was that I had postpartum alopecia because I just had the baby then. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, it's like, no, no, no. It's because you just had a baby. It is the same as your postpartum alopecia, mm-hmm. right? Then it happens that I had a, another baby back to back. So even when he recovered, I still had a little again. postpartum alopecia. So you cannot really complain because uh, 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 it's postpartum alopecia. And, and to be very honest, postpartum alopecia had a lot to do with it. So I had just one left area, one right area, two locks fell off. And mm-hmm. uh, But they are fully regrown now. You won't even know. Anyway, I couldn't really argue that much. And then every time I stopped breastfeeding, I dye my hair. Mm-hmm. Because I really wanted to do this interesting locks I've not done. I have not done. Um, I just wanted to experiment in my hair. So you know, you stop breastfeeding, you dye your hair, then you get pregnant, then you mm-hmm. stop breastfeeding, then you dye your hair again. Anyway, it all boiled down to the fact that by the time I finished breastfeeding the second child, who was back to back with the first child, the front, the frontal region of my hair was nothing to write on about, and I looked at my locks in the. Mirror one day and I said, There is something wrong. Mm-hmm. There is something wrong. And I remember the second time I did the dying, was intense dying. The, they are trained by Loctitia. Mm-hmm. And the, the new Loctitians were born. It was a very, let me just say, it was a very beautiful style. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was really, it was so done. Like, if I wasn't careful, the hair would have fallen out of my head totally. Mm-hmm. You get, and I was like, I blamed myself because I know better. Mm. Yeah. I know better. Um, 
I, I know better. If somebody had done this and had come to visit the hair clinic, I would have almost blamed the person if the person had the same hair care knowledge like I did. But <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> like, I'm even, I'm even looking for a way to, to, put, to put my statements together. You get. I, I, so I completely understand. Yeah. One year journey of repairing that was unnecessary. What would I have done? What would I have done differently? Yeah, I might have dyed my hair, but maybe not dyed with such intensity. You know, I'm allowed such intensity of of traction after dyeing it. Mm. You get, and uh, maybe I would have said, okay, I realize your the front of your hair is different from the back of your hair because that's the truth. The front of my hair is different from the back of my hair. I can't do, I can't, hair can never fall off at the back of my hair or in the parietal region. But the front of my hair, it can easily fall off. It used to fall off when I used to braid my hair. In those days when I knew nothing about hair care, so why should I think it would be different now that I'm locking my hair? Interesting. So, um, yeah, that's, Interesting. That's, that, that was my mistake. And, um, yeah, I'm on the journey of recovery. Yeah, I've recovered fully. But yeah, it can still you be better. That was my mistake. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so so that's awesome information. There are two things that you actually spoke on in sharing your personal experience that I would like us to uh that first of all I didn't realize that the act of stopping breastfeeding can actually even affect your hair. This is the first time I'm hearing no. that. Okay. No, no. I, 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 I think there's a mistake there. The act of stopping breastfeeding doesn't affect your hair, but I could I could only dye my hair when I stopped breastfeeding. Okay, okay. So I okay, okay. Yeah, so the, that's why the dye coincided with that because I dyed my hair twice. After the first breastfeeding and after the second breastfeeding. Okay. And immediately after the first breastfeeding, I got pregnant immediately. So I'm dying my hair, I'm getting pregnant immediately, my body is changing, my hair is falling, and I'm still engaging in in serious traction. So it was all those factors put together. Okay, all right, cool. So basically, you shouldn't actually dye your hair while you're breastfeeding. Yeah, my, my hair stylist is a very knowledgeable one, and she refused to dye your hair. And that's just because the, you know, it's chemical. Mm-hmm. Anything can stick into your bloodstream. That'd be true. Okay. Ideally, you should not relax your hair when you're breastfeeding. You can relax your hair, but what, what if you're the unlucky person? Who has what if you're the unlucky person that gets the, 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 the chemical stick into your bloodstream? Mm. The people yeah. that have CCCA today, they are the unlucky ones, but not everybody relaxing their hair have CCCA. But the unlucky one has CCCA at the end of the day. And um, CCCA is central psychiatrical um, centrifugal um, alopecia. Okay. Sorry for the psychiatrical okay. <laughs> <jargon. laughs> I was going to ask something, and I'm, I'm very happy that yes. you kind of cleared that. So that's why yes. the center of Just your hair basically alopecia. pulls out. Yes, no, when the, when they say scar tissue that forms underneath your scalp, mm-hmm. it basically affects the center of your hair. So the scar tissue blocks the hair follicles and, and the hair follicles growing. basically die off and the hair stops growing. And there's a thick scar underneath your scalp. Interesting. But it's invisible to the eyes, yes. Interesting. That is a very, very interesting thing because you see a lot of women yes. who are coming in with that sort of baldness, yes, baldness yes, and you yes, think that yes. oh what's going on sometimes is it yes. age is it hormones so sometimes it might actually be from chemical previous chemical yes, uh, process yes. that you've done to your hair okay yes. okay so now with people that have locks color like you rightly said is one of the things that we all love to do everybody wants to see their yeah. hair blonde green gold something sometimes some people even come to me and say i want you to dye my hair white and i'm always like if i do that wow you will have no hair left <laughs> <laughs> you will have no hair left at the end of that chemical process that will change your hair from black to white so wow. now and i personally based off of my experience of doing this for the past six years and seeing the effect of color has had on my own hair and on some of the people's hair that I've done. It's something that I really advise. And when people choose to do it, I kind of make them know that they really have to pay attention to taking care of their hair. I normally preach that when you color your hair, you are stripping it off of some of its natural um, nutrients and layers. And so it becomes more susceptible to breakage. So as a trichologist, 
is there really a safe way to color your hair or you just kind of have to live with the eventual damage that comes out of coloring your hair well, there is a safe way to color your hair, but the truth is that colored hair is semi-damaged hair. That's the truth. There's nothing, we cannot hide from the truth. It is not my opinion. It is not your opinion. It is not the opinion of the of the cosmetics company. It is pure right. science. Mm -hmm. When you color your hair, your cuticles are raised. When your cuticles are raised, your cortex is exposed, period. It is period. You can put your hair under the a microscope and you will see for yourself. It is the same thing as relaxed hair. Relaxed hair is semi-damaged hair because your corticles are permanently raised. Same thing for dyed hair. Your corticles are permanently raised. So the only thing we have to do is to mitigate whatever semi-damage we have caused to our hair by coloring it. You can only mitigate it. You can only try to manage it but you cannot have your corticles as flattened as it is when it's not dyed. Mm -hmm. That is the pure truth. So how do you color your hair safely? Use a professional, number one. Use mm -hmm. a professional. Go to a professional, somebody that is trained in hair coloring. Somebody, because there's this thing where people, what people do now that they just bleach the hair completely and they leave bleached hair exposed. They don't, so what you're supposed to do is bleach, then deposit, right? Mm -hmm. And people just bleach. They don't deposit color. Because they want the very blonde look, they want the very white look, as you have said, they want the very everything look, and they leave the hair bleached. They don't deposit any color back into, you know, to replace the melanin that has been taken out. That is, that's another thing people do. They bleach, they don't deposit. Secondly, they don't go to professionals. Finally, they use um, products that, that are not... Um, that are not worthy, like damaging products. So mm -hmm. remember in those days when we used to relax our hair, we used to have the box relaxers and we used to have the kits. Mm -hmm. So it's always best for you to you have to use the kits. And you you cannot use the kits by yourself. You have to have a hair colorist using a kit for you. Mm -hmm. You get so you just stay down and use a box. And I would not even advise anybody to just stay and to buy a box color and just do it themselves. Go to a professional stylist. Let the professional stylist use the kits they have been trained to. Um, to use because different professionals are um, trained with different brands, different kits, and they will take out the color and they will deposit whatever it is they want to deposit. You yeah. get yeah. those are safe ways, I can say, of dying. Therefore, maintenance I mean, you know what to do. If you are moisturizing your hair once, by the time you color your hair, you moisturize your, your hair 10 times daily. <laughs> it looks actually, if you want to have the, if you want to have the, the, your hair the way it used to be, anything you were doing once, three times. And pain once you color your hair because remember I said your cuticles are permanently raised so mm -hmm. your cortex is exposed it means it's exposed to heat it's exposed to rain it's exposed to sun it's exposed to the weathering effect it's exposed to everything so whatever it is you are doing do it times ten if you don't want to be times ten and many of us are guilty of it then don't, don't, don't color, color your hair, hair. Thank or you just very color much. your hair and accept that it will be damaged yeah you can't eat your cake and have it. <laughs> Aslala, I'm very happy yeah. that this is coming from the words of a, a professional because a professional psychologist and it's coming from a scientific place because when I tell people, it almost sounds like, oh, Ade, you're just being very kumba here. Because I was like, if you really, yeah. I, I, I always try and have people understand that. I was like, you need to make a choice. Most times, if you are looking for length, the fact is that that hair is most likely going to be damaged in a year or two and will fall off. So you will not achieve your length goal. So if you really want the color, do it, but you know that you're going to sacrifice something eventually yeah. for it. So yeah. I, I'm happy that we've had that color conversation. Now, um, I really want to talk to, even though my main focus was going to be trichology on this, but um, there's the trend and um, the internet for me has been a very controversial and interesting place. And I think that's what, one of the things that exp inspired me to try and put together a series about talking to experts because everybody now puts a camera in front of their face and tells people what to do. So okay. it, it's almost like sometimes you see some things and you're like, just watching the video, you're like, oh no, don't do that. You know, you, I, and you can see people like literally destroying their hair on a daily basis of this beautiful place called the internet that I'm grateful for. But, you know, it's very difficult for you to differentiate who is giving you good information and who isn't. So for most people, 
um, the, the way I'm taking the conversation to now is basically products. Is there any such thing as a miracle okay. product? Because, you know, people who have dry scalp, dandruff, psoriasis, psoriasis um, thinning hair, um, the CCCA thing that you just talked about with the centrifugal loss of hair and all of that. So people are dealing with all spectrum of issues, but you see products that say, hey, this product is the product. It's, it's going to regrow your hair. Your hair is going to grow 10 inches in one month. Your, and it promises all sorts of things. And then, you know, people rush and awesome marketing. So, of course, they get the sales and then you, you fall into that trap. Is there any such thing as a miracle product? Mm. Okay. Because I'm a product manufacturer, um, I'm a cosmetic scientist. I can, I think I can give a balanced uh, view. Uh, with, I can, hello? Yeah, I can give okay. a balanced view here. So, um, now what we have is products that stimulate hair growth. So we have, we have things that actually stimulate hair growth. And, um, some people use those ingredients in their products, but you will still need to do your work. So now, like I tell people, if you give me hair follicles that are active and you give me your dedication, I need your dedication, then we can regrow your hair. If your pro, we can regrow your hair using, and now there is this, you know, there is the, we are now really, really getting into the Ayurveda life where we have seen Ayurveda work well for hair loss recovery. Now I'm talking about hair loss here. I'm not talking about grow your hair in seven months kind of thing. Mm -hmm. or grow bomb length hair in seven months. I'm talking of hair loss recovery now. People that have things like traction alopecia, or androgenic alopecia, which is the hormonal type. So we have had things like people using DHT blockers or herbs that have DHT blockers. Those are dihydrotestosterone, which is the hormone that increases the production of allergens, uh, androgens, sorry, that stop the hair from growing and makes that person develop androgenic alopecia. So we now have herbs that we now, they have DHT blockers, block those hormones. And we have, you understand, it's not more, everybody's not more subject to things like minoxidil anymore. So we have those things that will reverse those hair loss you get. So we can reverse hair loss with products, which is normal. That's why, that's what trichologists have there to do anyway. Mm -hmm. But if you have, if you're looking for a miracle product or a miracle pill, because not only products, it's pills also, you know, I you use, I you grow your hair. In a two months, mm -hmm. you get you go to a um, with then hair, it's not gonna work. You get mm -hmm. the thing is, we can only stimulate growth from your scalp. But the kinds of people that are looking for miracle products that are not ready to do the work, and they are a lot because most of these people that have traction and the PHR have this is is out of. Not okay. doing the work that they get so in the if, first if place. If you, if, if you continue with your lack of hair care, your lack of proper hair care, you're not going to get the results. In fact, the hair will grow, but it will break as it's growing. <laughs> it's only us that we know that it, like, it will be growing and breaking. You will not even know that it's growing. So, for example, a, 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 a good example, you're using wigs, which is good. Wigs, wigs are fine. You're using wigs. With severe traction alopecia, as the hair is trying to grow, the wigs will be shaving it off like a cutlass, shaving of grass. You will, will just be telling, oh, but this, 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 your follicles are still active, are still active. You will not see the growth. You will not see it with your physical eyes. They will be getting shaved off almost immediately. So it is always best to focus on what got that person into that place rather than the products. Right. Right, 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 right. Yes, rather than the product. We focus yeah. on the, the what got you there in the first place. Now, if it's complete hair loss that we are trying to recover, that's a different business. So you take that one, that's a more intense process. You take the person through the, through the uh, 
uh, a particular program, whatever the was, it still requires hundred percent commitment from whoever is uh, yeah. this yes. is the, the patient. Let's put it like that. Yeah. Right. Now um, that makes yeah. Sense. So the miracle product is this product stimulation plus the real miracle. Your work is the real miracle. The things you do is a real miracle. You get yeah. in most most yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I know we have talked about some scalp issues like alopecia, postpartum, and traction, and even like um, dandruff and psoriasis. Um, the next question I have because I know that trichology is basically the treatment of hair and scalp itself. Um, I'm of the opinion that everything kind of starts from the roots. So from your scalp, you know, if you have healthy scalp, the chances are that you will grow healthy hair. Um, does can someone's hair have a disease? The hair itself, after it grows, because like um, your nails, your hair is almost like dead cells that are still growing. But is it possible that your hair can be damaged by itself without external forces like color, which we've already spoken about? Is that is is there are there any such diseases that we can worry about or look out for? Of course, it's not really talked about because they are not visible to the eyes, but they are a lot they are called air shaft disorders. So I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna give you some examples. Um they are called hair shaft disorders, they are not hair loss disorders. So this is the hair that has grown out of your head. Mm -hmm. Um they, they have other but and they end up manifesting themselves in form of breakage actually you get because when your 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 hair shaft is so that right you cannot see it with your eyes you can only just tell oh this person's hair is breaking right mm -hmm. this person's hair and this is not how hair why is my hair just breaking like so they are called hair shaft disorder so i will just um oppose i'm just i'm just uh, so that i make sure i give you like a, a a um a good example. Mm -hmm. They are not things you see. You only see that in your in your trichology class, your trichology school, and if they put somebody's hair under the trichological school, because most times they are concentrating on the scalp, not on the hair shaft itself. And by the time that happens, um, the hair has already fallen off. So there's something called bubble hair, for example. That's just out of my head. So this there are some kinds of hair hair strands. That they have holes in between, and water is the the air strands. That, I'm trying to explain mm -hmm. these things such that yes. you can picture it in your head. Mm -hmm. You get so the 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 water is trapped inside the hair strand. But you know that because the hair strand is so tiny, mm, to the tiny. Device, you can you cannot see it. So they are called bubble hair. We have things like um, people that have natural trichotillosis because um, trichotillosis is just basically the hair that's easily splits. You understand? Splits strands, so split ends. And there are some people that are very, very pro prone to split ends um, as a result of, of the kind of hair that they have. You understand? So they are very prone to split ends. So these are people that their hair just breaks very easily. You get, and those kind of people are the kind of people that will benefit from um, finger detangling a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Or are we still on the locks, people? No, 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 no. I mean, no, when you're talking about yeah. hair sharp disorders, you can't really talk mm -hmm. about locks anymore because Big. locks, locked hair is locked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for hair sharp disorders, we are talking really about the people that have free hair, yeah. not locked hair. Yeah. Okay, yes. no, that, I, I'm sure that there might be one or two people who are probably yet to lock their hair who yes, listen to the yes, podcast and who benefit. Yeah. Yes. Who, who yes. benefit from Then we have something called, yeah, there are a lot. We have something called monelectrics. That is the hair is like it's twisted. It's like you know when you take a a the hair is just not it's just twisted. Like when you take a, a thread, eh, mm -hmm. and you start twisting the thread by itself, you're not twisting it around each other, you just start twisting it and it just looks twisted up. Some people's hair are naturally twisted up like that. You get so mm -hmm. it is um uh, I wish let's say it's a video podcast, I would have shown you pictures. So, monolectrics is basically twisted. So, some parts are thin, 
You see, part of the hair will be fat, part of the hair strand will be thin, part of the hair strand will be fat, part of the hair strand will be thin because it's like twisted hair. Right. As I said, they are not really visible to the eyes. Then you have things like uh, uh, you have things like uh, well, that's not a hair strand um, disorder. That's multigemini when you have many many hair strands coming out of one follicle. That's why you have people that have really, really, really like. Yeah, like, is this person's hair real? It's so, so full, full because it's not one follicle to produce, like, two strands or three strands or even one strand. One follicle is producing as much as 10 to 11 strands. It's from one hole. You mm-hmm. understand? 10 to 11. And the person has, like, um, a million follicles over their head. So you can imagine the fullness of the head. Yeah. Then we have things like pili in Kanata, which is ingrown hair. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the hair is so curvy and so sharp that it grows and enters back enters goes back inside the follicle so it's it's so coily so sharp you it grows enters the follicle back and grows and it causes, causes an infection because it's called um pillar in canata which is um, ingrown hair so we have uh ring hair we have so many of them but yeah, yeah. people are not really concerned about these hair sharp disorders because it's really more about the hair loss at the end of the day hair sharp disorders um um uh, they manifest themselves in form, in form of hair breakage. Right. Okay, so um, thank you for the insight and the many technical terms that you've used, but definitely I think if there's anything, um, you helped me to understand the real need for a trichologist and how, you know, this science is actually very important. So I think um, I will be wrapping up a bit shortly and I think I have questions around two areas before we we wrap up. I want to go back to psoriasis because I think it's one of the most common and most disturbing hair disorders that uh or scalp disorders that I've I've seen personally and a lot of people struggle with. And some people are even looking to lock their heads to try and see if they can manage it better or sometimes, you know, the reverse. Um, for most people, you know, I know I recommend a trichologist, they start to use some products and they get some relief. And is this a chronic condition or can it be reversed? Is there, is, is psoriasis something that you have to treat for the rest of your life or is, can, can it really be reversed and you go back to normal when you have that condition? It can be managed, let me put it that way. Okay. It can be managed to a point where it's it doesn't really disturb you anymore. You get so um I will say it can be reversed because if you stop managing it, um it can come back. It's chronic. well, some people's own um are more chronic than, than others. others. You get so for some people it can be chronic for some people. It's not psoriasis it doesn't happen only on the scalp. That was on some other parts of the skin also. For some people, it happens just on the scalp, you get. But I will say it can be well, well, well managed. Okay. You get, it can be managed to the point where it will not, it will not be visible. Um, but you need to continue managing it. So I think that's the question. That's the answer I will give to that. Right. Right. Okay. So um, the last question is, Kind of, I don't even know. Let me try and organize my thoughts so that the question comes out the way it is. Um, in, in my experience so far, I believe that like hair, our, our our lives, our entire being is all connected. Everything is like all connected. And like you rightly said, when I have someone in my chair and I'm doing a consultation and I'm trying to understand what it is they want to even do with their hair from a style point of view, I try to understand other things about their lifestyle to influence how their hair will be treated, you know, because you're just missing them sometimes, most times for the first time. So you kind of have to get some background to, to, to decide how, what methods we're going to use, what products we're going to use, what kind of allergies they might probably have, because sometimes some people, some people's scalp reactions are actually just an allergic reaction to a particular product. So there's all of that. Uh, but at what point do you kind of really know when maybe it is your age, getting older is turning, making you lose your hair, or if it's an hormonal imbalance, or if it is an allergic reaction, 
you know, because all of these things are so intricately connected. How is it? Let me give an instance of maybe an older woman who is approaching maybe mid fifties. So she's already at that age where some sort of hair loss is kind of expected. However, you are, you, you know, um, oh, <laughs> I'm really trying to get to the core of my question. How do you make these connections at, as a trichologist to know exactly what the best cause of action for someone is? Okay. So basically, when um, they come, there are questions we, there are questions we ask mm -hmm. um, that help us know, and there are patterns. They are trained to read patterns. So it's like a, a traditional doctor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a traditional is, and the traditional is to show the calories, <laughs> and when it comes to your face, your, it's from your, know, is that illness, it comes to your face, it's, so we read the patterns, we read the shapes. Mm -hmm. So when we read, so we read, we read patterns of hair loss. We examine the follicles and we ask questions. Mm -hmm. Is the pattern that hair loss? So for example, a simple thing: hormonal hair loss does not happen in the middle of the head. Okay. I mean, let me put it. Not let me put, don't let me put it that way because for some reason, what's of androgenic alopecia? Hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. Hormonal imbalance does not manifest in the middle of the head. It yes. doesn't. Hormonal imbalance or things like that they happen in the temples. You get mm -hmm. they, they happen in the temples. So when it, when when you come with one in the middle of the head, we know number one that's not hormonal imbalance. It is not postpartum alopecia. It is not hormonal imbalance. It just happens in the middle. I mean, in the in the temporal region. You get right. so. Androgenic alopecia does not happen in the in the in the temples in the temporal region. It happens in the parietal region. So there are things that will happen, and, but not all parietal regions are androgenic alopecia. So we have to go for that then examine the follicles. Right. Then there's you know there are, there are the vertical air loss, there's the circular air loss. So all those things are things we put together. By the time we are done with the consultation, we'll be able to tell. Uh, what particular hair loss this is. Then, if we have any issues, we can send the person for a scalp biopsy. So, mm. now give like a 100% uh, diagnosis because what we give is about 98% diagnosis, 99% diagnosis for some kinds of hair loss. For some, we give 100% diagnosis. But for some kind of hair loss, what we give 100%, we can just say, now go and do a scalp biopsy. So, we use basically patterns, we use the state of the follicles, and we use um, all the answers that we have gotten from the consultations to determine the kind of hair loss. Right. Thank you so much, Asilola. There's so much that we've gained from you that I personally have gained from you, even as a loctician from this conversation. We've spoken extensively about scalp and hair issues. We've spoken about the effect of color. We've spoken about, I, I've learned that, you know, you should probably be very careful with the dye if you're when you're breast, breastfeeding. And there yes. is hope. There's definitely hope for anybody who is experiencing hair loss uh, and um, even scanty hair, you kind of have to do the work and you have to make sure that you sort the right kind of experts that is going to help you on that journey. And so this, I think, has been a worthy conversation. And I know that um, about less than an hour is nowhere enough to kind of cover yeah. the issues around hair, hair loss and all of that. So I'd like you to please let people know where they can find you. And um, yeah, so we'll take it from there. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for having me. It's been a privilege. I really love talking about hair, as you can hear. Mm -hmm. I can talk about hair for, from <laughs> now till the kingdom come. Um, you can find me um, at um, African Naturalistas page. That's Africa Naturalistas, one end in between. African Naturalistas page, where um, that's the parent page for all African Naturalistas products and services. You can also find, out, find us on The Good Hair Tribe. The Good Hair Tribe is very simple. The Good Hair Tribe on Instagram. Um, you can find us on, uh, find me personally on um, Instagram, H A W T Y L O W L A. My personal page is not that active as the African Naturalistas page, but I try. Um, yeah, so you can just send us, um, uh, we can be reached at info at African Naturalistas. That never fails. 
because all these other handles, I am not there personally, but info as African naturalist has, you're sure to get, <laughs> you're sure to get a response from me from info as African naturalist has. And on our website, africannaturalistas.com, um, that now sends um, you to all our products and our services. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think the biggest takeaway for me in regards to locks in this conversation is that locked hair is still hair and you have to take care of it. You cannot assume yes. that if you've locked your hair, you've abandoned it. You have to pay attention just like anybody else. So thank you so much yes. again for kicking off this first episode of the Meet the Expert series. I'm really excited. I think we're on to a good start. And I think the other guests that I have coming up will also shed so much light. I'm really proud of this and thank you so much for helping out. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. I, I would not mind coming back sometime next year. Okay. When this series has blown. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, when this series has blown, now we, we can... Everybody's hearing our name, so you just bring us back then. Oh, please. I'm glad. Isha, that's a big <laughs> amen for me. Amen to that. So see you in the future. Next year. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thanks. All right, then. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh yes, this is indeed a good way to start off this season. Um, Atilela's conversation is validation in my mind that experts should indeed be sought in regards to hair care issues. Our conversation was packed and if you're out there thinking right now if you need a trichologist, you should probably make that call. Well, in our next episode, we'll be talking to a fitness communicator who is certified in nutrition. That conversation is going to be packed full with a lot of information. You definitely do not want to miss it. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Talking Locks with Locks with podcast. It has been such a pleasure being your host. My name again is Adi Balogun and many thanks to our producer, Savage Media. To listen to previously published seasons and upcoming episodes in the Midi Expert series, please don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. We are currently on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and Deezer Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube and our RSS feed. We are the Talking Locks Podcast. Also, please don't forget to follow us on social media. We are at Locktude, L-O-C-I-T-U-D-E. And you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until our next episode, don't forget to keep it locked in an attitude. Bye.